Hi. This lesson is all about magma viscosity and the effect that that would have on the nature of volcanic eruptions. Now, before you start the le this lesson, you should have watched the uh, introductory video on magma viscosity. And you'll also need uh, the handout that goes with the lesson. It has two graphs and it uh, has this title on it. Okay, let's go. Let's start with defining what we actually mean. Viscosity is the resistance uh, to flow of a liquid, if you like, the, the opposite of fluidity. You can think about this uh, in terms of um, familiar uh, liquids. Think about ketchup, for example. If you get proper high quality Heinz ketchup, that's going to be more viscous. It doesn't flow as easily. If you have got a glass bottle of it, you need to persuade it to come out of the bottle. If you go for a cheaper Tesco value ketchup, that's going to dribble slightly disappointingly out of the bottle without much need for persuasion. The Heinz ketchup is more viscous. The Tesco value ketchup has much lower viscosity. And this is a really important property in determining the eruptive behavior, how uh, explosive uh, a volcano uh, could be. This is an example. This is uh, an eruption of Kilauea, um, a event called Puo O'o. Uh, on Hawaii, one of the most active volcanoes in the world. You can see from the photograph that this is erupting lots of very fluid lava. The lava's flowing away from the, uh, from the vent there. We've even got a lava fountain within the vent. Um, you know, it's hot uh, and it's fluid. Now, the silica content of this magma is relatively low. Only about 50% of this is silica. The rest is that iron and magnesium. But that has an effect on this volcano. It affects the hazards it creates. It affects the risks that it poses. If we contrast that with another volcano, this is the Soufria Hills in Montserrat. It's erupted in the mid-1990s in a whole series of really quite explosive eruptions. You can see that we've got uh, paraclastic flow uh, ash clouds. Um, very, very little lava was erupted uh, in this eruption. Most of the um, lava that was erupted piled up on top of the vent, created an incredibly unstable, very, very dangerous uh, lava dome, which would periodically collapse Triggering, triggering pyroclastic flows like you can see. Now, the silica content of this magma is only about 62%. It doesn't seem like much of a change, but it is a significant difference in the uh, composition of the magma, and as a result, its viscosity. Let's think about what factors then do control this viscosity. One of the factors is temperature. The higher the temperature, the lower the viscosity. Now, as we'll see when we look at um, plate tectonics, temperature is also related to the composition of the material as well. With temperature, we also need to consider to what extent the magma is already crystallized. The greater the proportion of crystals within the magma, the more viscous it will be. But as we've already seen from our examples, perhaps the most important uh, factor is magma composition. Let's have a look at some figures. You have these graphs on your handout. Just to give you some uh, comparison, 
Uh, water, to a temperature of 20 degrees, has got a viscosity of 1, there or thereabouts. Uh, at higher temperatures, the viscosity is less than 1. At lower temperatures, it goes a bit above 1. I think the maximum it gets to uh, before it freezes is 1.7. Just to give you some uh, comparison with this. Okay, there's a few questions I'd like you to have a go at. Firstly, can you describe the relationship between the silica content of magma and its viscosity? Secondly then, on the right-hand graph there, can we sketch in uh, the relationship between temperature and viscosity for andesitic magma? And finally, can you calculate how many times more viscous the least viscous granitic magma is compared to the most viscous basaltic magma. What's that gap? Okay, now's the time to press pause on the video. Have a go at those questions. Answer them in the space around those graphs. Have a go at it now. Okay then, let's see what we've come up with. If we look at this relationship on the left-hand graph, at first glance, uh, well, the, the basic relationship is very obvious. The higher uh, the silica content, the greater the viscosity. However, we've got to be very careful with the axes of this graph. At first glance, it looks like a, a linear relationship, but it's not. If you look at that vertical axis, um, it's, a, it's a logarithmic scale. It's going up by powers of 10. I then ask you to sketch on um, to the graph on the right, the viscosity of andesite. And you should have something about uh, in that sort of region, somewhere in the middle of uh, the two. You can certainly plot the uh, viscosity very accurately, because we can get that from the second graph. Finally, I ask you to calculate. The difference between the top of that basaltic magma line and the bottom of the granitic magma line um, is uh, from 2 times 10 to the minus 7 down to 10 to the power of 2. So if we divide those, we get 2 times 10 to the power of 7 minus 2, which is 2 times 10 to the 5, or to put it another way, 200,000 times more viscous. It's a big difference. Okay then, as we watch the sunset over Erterale, we can draw some conclusions from this. Silica content clearly has the biggest influence on the viscosity of magma. It's not the only factor, but it is the most important. The more viscous the magma, the more it can trap uh, the volatiles, the gases that we get with uh, volcanoes. The result of this is that there's a clear relationship between the silica content of the magma in a volcano and the risk it poses. More silicic uh, volcanoes are going to be more ex explosive. Not only that, but we've already seen earlier in the course that this viscosity, combined with the temperature, can also have an effect on where this magma actually will crystallize. It's a key factor in understanding the behavior of magma and where we find igneous rocks. That should summarize 
really where we are with our understanding of igneous rocks. If you've got any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'll see you then.